In this video, I want to talk a little bit about the importance of using an isolation transformer when you're doing electronic troubleshooting. I had made a previous video about this a long time ago, but I didn't think I did that great of a job, so I thought it would be a good idea to redo it. Basically, an isolation transformer allows you to plug this plug, for example, into an outlet and uh, plug the device you're working on into this outlet right here and what happens is the the voltage going in is exactly the same as the voltage coming out of it and you're probably wondering why is that something you'd want to have why would you want a transformer that puts out the exact same voltage and the reason for an isolation transformer is what they call ground isolation now the way I became familiar with them was after making a mistake when I first started working in a television repair shop I remember that particular day uh, we were working on an older style TV that had what they call a hot chassis. It was designed quite different than the TV you're looking at here. They had a great big metal bracket with all kinds of circuit boards on it. And uh, and the chassis was uh, considered hot in reference to ground. So for example, if you were to take the ground wire, which I did that particular day, and hook it up to the chassis, you'd see sparks fly. And I didn't know that, so went ahead and hooked it up, saw a big spark, uh, all of a sudden the TV went dead and it had a worse problem than what it started out with. So I went ahead and told the boss what had happened and uh, my boss said why didn't you use an isolation transformer? And uh, anyway th that day I set out to understand a little bit better why why it was important what they do and how they work and I'm gonna go ahead and explain it here and hopefully keep it real simple. Basically if you look at the way the power goes into your house you've got your high voltage going to your pole transformer which lowers it to 110 and 220 volts. In this case we're, we're only talking about the 110 volt input and it of course goes to your outlets in your house. Now if you take note of the fact that one of the wires coming from the pole transformer has a ground rod and it goes into earth ground and, and the earth actually be, almost becomes like a, a giant conductor so it actually is able to, to uh, allow electricity to flow along its outer surface here. So let's say you happen to be barefoot and you're working on, on something and it, whatever you're working on makes contact with this uh, hot side of the outlet here, uh, you're going to get a shock. And um, when, I, when I refer to this as the hot side of the outlet, it's not hot as, as we think of in terms of negative and positive. With alternating current, that negative and positive is qu constantly switching polarity. But when I say it's hot, it's actually hot or live, rather, in reference to earth ground. So, for example, if this guy's standing on the ground here, he touches this side of the outlet, he's going to get a bad shock or potentially a lethal shock. So you got to be careful there. Now, don't always assume that the outlet uh, is going to be hot on this side. It's supposed to be, but a lot of times amateur electricians come in and install new outlets and they may reverse the polarity, so it might just happen to be that this side is going to be the hot side. So, um, I just thought I'd put that in little simpler terms. Now, let's say that we're going to add an isolation transformer to this now, so I'm going to set this uh, little piece of paper on top here. So now we've got we've got the addition of an isolation transformer. Let's look what happens. So now we've got this isolation transformer that I showed plugged into this outlet here. So now we're we're uh, passing the voltage from this side of the transformer to this side and onto this outlet that we've got our TV that we're working on plugged into and we're transferring the same voltage that we had over here over to here but now there's no grounding side. So let's say for example that this guy is walking on this earth he's still barefoot now he's touching the one side of the outlet that used to be hot. It's no longer hot because again there's no grounding point. But if you didn't have the isolation transformer on the other hand, um, picture this earth as being a giant piece of metal. It's like having two wires going to him. So again we'll, we'll add the uh, isolation transformer as you can see he has nothing to worry about. Well it's basically the same when you're when you're working with the uh, electronics and you're troubleshooting. You know, if I if I had the oscilloscope now uh, plugged into an isolation transformer and or the uh, or the TV for that matter, it generally you, you plug the device you're working on into the isolation transformer. I could take the ground wire and hook it up to the chassis. Even if the chassis was was hot, there's not going to be any uh, any sparks flying. So thought that would be important to talk about that a little bit. I don't know about you guys, but I've had a lot of serious shocks in my life, and some, some are quite uh, memorable. Well, after finishing this video, one of my viewers pointed out an important detail, which I figured I'd better add to my video. 
Apparently a lot of the new isolation transformers that utilize a ground input port on them don't have true isolation between one side of the transformer and the other. And I just figured I'd better explain that in this video. There's a gentleman that produced a lengthy video on the subject, Carlson Labs, and I think I'll link to it in my video. And he talks about why that is. But uh, apparently the remedy for that is to put an adapter on the isolation transformer that doesn't have a ground port that actually goes anywhere. So I just thought I'd better add that quick note. Don't want to see any of my viewers blowing up their oscilloscopes or hurting themselves. So there you have it. As always, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe.